to me you are a crucial a second exception of crucial nation builder everything depends on optimal utilization of financial resources and there your role i also heard that perhaps some leaders have advised or exhorted you to not only be in the in the in the sphere of just cost management and accounting but also then be the part of the strategic thinking i really wonder how come it has not come so far <laughs> because one who knows how to manage the how efficiently you manage your finances which is the life blood of any enterprise any endeavor how they can not be the part of the strategic community of that organization in the decision where, where decisions are taken about the shape and future of the organization i think if it is not again i will really, either there is some kind of a lack of communication or lack of inadequate appreciation because you are you are just not in the business of just bookkeeping you know the theme i was looking at it the changes in the business landscape the change is happening everywhere in all aspect of our life and change is happening very fast in the fast changing landscape you have not only to keep pace with it but many a times you should aspire to be the driver of change by being ahead of the curve and how do you do that today i have i heard we are also talking about digitalization now you know this technology is is changing is in a way that is at times looks overwhelming by the time you get used to you are getting used to not even got used to a particular technology something far smarter is there now in this kind of fast changing landscape all of you those who are in the crucial business of looking at the finance and its optimum utilization i think you have to be versatile you cannot just keep yourself within the silos of your your trade so far the element of your skill set has to be keeping yourself abreast with the latest technology which is going to sh- change the shape of the world change to change is going to change the way in which we conduct our business individually in our personal life in our family life in our professional life is very very important and it may be difficult for the older generation but certainly it should not be for the those who are young or young entrants <coughs> friends i know i am conscious of the fact that you are we are at the valedictory session and everyone here is perhaps thinking of about the next step going back to their your respective uh, domains and destinations as i told you that i am not here and i am not competent enough to talk to you about your trade the craft of your business but certainly i would like to urge you as a parting message or you can call it a part an appeal to all of you to 
keep in mind. You know, you are, first of all, you need to be conscious of how crucial is your role. Many a times I've seen many of our, many of our professionals are not fully aware of, they don't even fully comprehend how important is their role. Because in the day-to-day -day business, they're doing the things they believe that is a routine and that's what they do. But if you look at how crucial is your role, be conscious of that. Then, I would like you to be, I would urge you to be conscious of a contemporary context. The context is, of course, is the changing landscape. It is there. But in the context of our country, when we say that you are, the na you are a crucial element of our nation building, then the state of the nation, where we are. You know, our country is at the cusp of a revolutionary transformation. Comprehensive transformation is happening in almost every domain of our individual and collective life. Some are, impact of some are being felt, and started getting felt, getting palpable. Some are not yet, but these will be felt tomorrow. But we are passing through a revolutionary transformation. You all know that we are in the Amrit Kaal of our country. And Amrit Kaal, you all know that it is the next quarter century of our nation building. The next quarter century is important because by the end of it, we will be completing 100 years of our independence. And when India becomes 100 year independent, where should it be? The country is moving forward with a clear sense of destiny. And a resolve to accomplish the destiny within the time frame. And what is our destiny? The destiny as is spelled out by the Prime Minister is Atma Nirvar Bharat. The Sharp Bharata. Self reliant India. Which would be the, the core, a strength of what we say, what he says is Oe Bharatam, Unnat Bharatam, Ek Bharat, Shreshth Bharat. And when we say Shreshth Bharat, what does it mean? And when we say Ek Bharat, what does it mean? Here, when I say that you keep that state of the nation in your mind, because many of the young professionals, young finance professionals, you would be there in 2047, mostly at the helm of affairs. And then you would be asking a question to yourself, what have you done to bring the country to achieve its destiny? What was your contribution? You would do the stock taking. This journey of next 25 years for all of us, we are all uniquely placed to be a witness and a partner both of this revolutionary transformation. But those who are young, you are. You have a special responsibility. You have long-term planning. And you have to move forward with that determination. <coughs> when we say Sveshta Bharat, what does it mean? First of all, to have a full grasp of, an emotional grasp of what it means, you have to understand Bharat, what Bharat is. 
the constitution of india article 1 of the constitution says india that is bharat it doesn't just stop at india it doesn't just stop at india that is british india it says india that is bharat and unfortunately this the there has been not adequate understanding of this bharat and when we say shreshth bharat what does it mean i don't know how many of you are aware that india was the economic power house of the world till 18th century from the first century till 18th century india was the dominant the most dominant economic power in the world this is there in the oecd report <coughs> oecd had commissioned a study which was provoked by a report a some a study presented by paul baroch an economic historian when paul baroch said in 1972 that europe became rich in last 200 years america became rich in last 100 years until then it was india which was the economic power house of the world the oecd countries they were very skeptical it was difficult to believe they they wanted to reject and denounce that report and so they commissioned a study under the chairmanship of professor angus Med angus medishan and the committee led by angus medishan published a report which is available on the net world economy a millennial perspective the world economy a millennial perspective it tells about the economy of the world from the first century onward and you should be proud that till about 12th century india had was more than 33% of the global gdp was india's and even till 18th century it was about 28% of the global gdp there was no america there was no europe china was the next <laughs> now what happened in the last 200 200 and odd years 250 years when we say about swasth bharat what we mean is can we go back and restore the glory of the bharat which was the leader of the world economic power house of the world the most advanced country in the world if it was there for 1800 years and if it has not happened and if it if the damage has happened in the last 250 years or so it is not something which is irretrievable it is not something which cannot be undone but this can be done only with the right spirit with the emotional involvement of each and every one of us and that emotional involvement comes only when we know what bharat was and what we mean by bharat but which was the bharat which was the economic power house of the world for 1800 years because the country which was the economic power house of the world could not have been just economic power house there must have been a strong robust education system technology system everything which helped india to be the economic power house so it is important that we especially i'm talking address, i'm addressing to the younger people to spend some time in understanding what is bharat and to understand bharat you cannot understand from the western western notion of a nation state because india this bharat has been unique first of all people of this country did not call themselves india india was only when the british came and they started calling and they started teaching us english they started calling it india all our ancient literatures only talk about bharat when mahakavi bharati mentioned about bharat mata bharat mata 
சேப்பு மோடி பதினெட்டு ஓடியார் அண்ட் சின்னை ஒன்று ஓடியார் மாத்திரம் What is that bar? If you understand, you feel, you have a feel for it. This bar cannot be understood in the, with the western notion of a national state. Because western nations, western countries were not created the way Bharat University. Western nation, states were created by force. How was America created? United States of America? we all know is not too far back in history some people from the britain went over to america north america captured the territory killed the natives subsequently annihilated the natives captured settled and united states of america immersed canada immersed in the same way it was the first french later on americans and british land and they chased the french out and they occupied it most of the countries of europe have also born out of force there was some bahubali some powerful man who controlled who captured the territory and made it bharat was never built or ever ruled by one ruler and that is why many people who are trained in the western notion of state of the nation state they ask you what are you talking about governor tell me who was the ruler who ruled the india one at one point of time i don't blame their ignorance because this is how they have been trained 2005 years ago when adi sankrachar went from south to badrinath josimat there were many